Okay, uh, my question was just uh, if you could um, speak about your beliefs on the theory that because the so we've overplanted the soil and the soil doesn't have nutrients anymore, that the fruit and the vegetables are not as healthy as they were 50, 100 years ago, and that that's why supplements are necessary? The soil, yeah. Actually, there is some evidence. Not a lot, but there is some evidence that over the years, our soil certainly has been depleted, our topsoil. And as a result, the nutrient composition of the soils are not quite the, what they used to be because the microorganisms are also sort of vanishing because of all the stuff we use. So there is some evidence, yes, that there is some of this kind of, something to take consideration. Uh, but uh, trying to estimate the size of that effect uh, is hard. And uh, my own guess is that the big question is just eating the right kinds of foods still today, even though they may not quite be what they were once. But if we use organic foods, for example, good organic soils, we've comp compensated for a lot, a lot of that loss, I think. Yeah. Or, yes. Proteins consistently lead to this liver cancer, right? and vegetable proteins don't. And to me, it would have implied that the hydrolysate of animal proteins contains something that is not in vegetable proteins. Is the total composition of hydrolysis ever been looked at to see if there's a common uh, acid, amino acid, or something else? Animal proteins, not in vegetable proteins. It would take me a long time to fully. Uh, Please repeat the question. Oh, the question is about animal protein and the distinction between animal and plant proteins. Is there something in animal proteins that sort of gives to that the property I've described as opposed to plant proteins? I think. Yeah, after they're hydrolyzed in the. After they're hydrolyzed, yeah. Um, well, they're hydrolyzed naturally, of course, into amino acids, as you know. And so uh, the, co the, the composition, the amino acid composition or profile, I guess, of plant proteins and animal proteins are distinctly different. Animal proteins are sort of like ours. We consume animal proteins, we got the whole platter of things to be used almost immediately. So we get a big, pun a big uh, punch immediately, to put it in general terms. But, but the, the difference between these two kinds of proteins really is in reference to the amino acid content which is not really disturbed by homogenization or pasteurization like some want to believe. It's not disturbed that much. And it's just so, have, it, this is an interesting question because when you took the wheat protein, deficient lysine, or the soy protein, deficient in another sulfur amino acid, we restore that, we convert wheat into an animal-like effect. So it really is an amino acid mm -hmm. composition effect. But there's more to that than a chance. Uh, always follow the money. That's super important. Uh, the second thing is this, and I've been sure you can ask this question any number of times. What about Eskimos? Okay, you all hear that? You know, what about Eskimos? Uh, first off, Eskimos from the, you know, when you look at Eskimos, you have to get death rate data that are convincing and validated and so forth. They, quite frankly, don't live long enough to get the kind of diseases. That's one of the problems that we're basically talking about here all that much. Their number one cause of death is trauma. It's trauma. And uh, the Maasai in Africa have been another group that's sort of been discussed that way. And I had for a graduate student the first Maasai person to ever come to the West to study. So I sent him back with a little money to get some more information on the Maasai. Because it's always been said that the Maasai, eating blood, meat, and milk, you know, didn't get heart disease, right? Well, it's not quite true. They're still consuming a lot of roots and tubers and stuff like that, especially in the off-season, number one. And number two, the man who gets quoted the most, George Mann, his name is, the man who gets quoted the most is saying they don't have heart disease. He went back in his own studies, published in 1972, to say that atherogenic lesions were prominent in those men that were examined through autopsy. So, I don't, I mean, there may be some slight advantage to these indigenous groups reading that, but no really big differences. Yes? I have a quick question. You talked about animal protein. What about fish? We're told that you know, all we need to be doing is eating more uh, salmon and good omega-3 fish. Yeah, again, everyone hear that? Mm -hmm. What about fish, that animal protein? Um, 
Yeah, if you test fish protein compared to some other animal proteins that was done by my friend Ken Carroll in terms of the ability to elevate cholesterol levels and create acidogenesis and things like that, fish protein is another animal protein. It really is. But, you know, then again, you have to go to the larger question of asking, you know, the whole food. You know, and there may be, I've said this sometimes, I'm about to back off of it, but I've said maybe fish, you know, is a bit of an outlier a bit because of its content of the omega-3 fats. And now we have a big review out of 59 studies. <laughs> omega-3 fats really don't do what they're <laughs> said to do, when, but that's in the supplement form, so I don't know. We got other problems with fish. I mean, I have an occasional fish dinner myself. Right or wrong? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to testify that uh, what you said about uh, physicians not getting much training and nutrition on, and that, uh, those subjects uh, is, is very true. Uh, it, when I was in medical school, it was barely touched on. And in fact, we probably got more training in health in high school, in our high school health class, than in medical school. And the same is true for some of my colleagues at uh, Johns Hopkins. But what I wanted to ask you is, can you recommend any researchers or, or uh, writings um, <coughs> that describe the specific whole foods that uh, do have a positive uh, effect on health? more so than others will say, and also f foods that have specific effects on specific diseases or conditions. Because obviously, you know, <clears throat> not all health foods, not all whole foods would be healthy for anyone. You know, obviously there are poisonous plants and that type of thing, and, and uh, there would be contraindications for certain medical diseases. But there, are there any books or uh, researchers you could recommend? Uh, that Please repeat the question. Okay, so the question is, are there any books that I could recommend uh, describing, let's say, the properties of individual whole foods, you know, for particular kinds of outcomes, I guess? For people who've been researching specific foods right. to treat specific uh, conditions, that, that would, that's more what I'm yeah, interested it, 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 It's hard. I mean, there, there have been books more or less written of this kind of thing, but they're pretty much focused on the nutrient contents. You know, and this food is good because it got beta carotene. That food is good. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing that's been done and drawn on research that's focused on the individual nutrients tested in, independently, you see. So I can't recommend a lot of these books or these papers because they're starting from that point of view. Um, I, Because I'm very interested in this. Where would they have got the money to do that research? <laughs> well, they may have done some research, yeah, that's, just like he has. I mean, it's, that's it's a, not something that there's a for sure. We could do sure. That, but you know, let me also suggest, though, that going to the level of looking at, about the differences, properties of individual foods, is a little bit risky, because the big question is whole plant-based foods. That's where health is, and then you get over here. And so there might be some differences. We know there are differences in various and sundry responses. You have to be concerned about what kind of response you chose to look at. Sure. So, you know, whereas you get a certain ranking for, let's say, cholesterol levels, you might get a slightly different ranking for something else. I mean, you see that kind of thing all the time. But, but the big difference is whole foods versus animal foods on one hand or fragmented plant parts. You know, if you took sugar and fiber and the good old lot of plants, all said to be good, right? Put it together, you got a Danish. <laughs> so, you know, I, see my point? I, so, yeah. Thank you very much.